Welcome back, Cannonites. With no cannon fodder this week, I felt it appropriate to make something to fill in the gap, and what better way than to take a look at some recently leaked Halo Wars 2 imagery. Now before we get into it, I want to make it clear that no official sources have commented on the authenticity of this image one way or another. However, since it's been circulating for the last few days, I'm fairly confident that it's legit. But enough with the disclaimers, let's take a look. I think the first thing that most fans will catch on to is the Lesser Arc, Installation 00, in the background. So we have a potential setting, but it still begs the question of when the game is set. Looking at the state of the Ark, my first instinct would be to think that this is set prior to 2552. Remember, the Spirit of Fire was still considered MIA in 2558, so them finding the Ark years before the UNSC at large does would not break canon. However, looking at the Foundry world in the center, it's in a very sorry state. This could suggest that this story takes place post Hunters in the Dark, which was 2555, and possibly even post Halo 5. Minor spoilers for Hunters in the Dark. In the book, the Ark's AI-000 Tragic Solitude had partially repaired the installation before tricking the UNSC into opening the portal on Earth, allowing her to send Retriever Sentinels to harvest more resources. At the end of the book, the UNSC was making plans to set up research bases on the Ark to study it and see if they could open more portals and fully repair the installation. Further muddying the waters is the presence of what looks like brute-specific vehicles. On the right, we can see this massive, almost scarab-like construct that, for lack of a better word, looks fairly brutish. Gray metal, rough edges, red war paint, it practically screams brute. Further, on the right just under that brute scarab, we can see locusts, which look like they also received a brute overhaul. What really stands out, though, is that both these vehicles are using a yellow-orange plasma, rather than the traditional green or blue plasma we've historically seen from these vehicles. Now, it's always possible that these were given to the pack of Brutes in secret, or these are older model excavators that the Brutes just sort of made their own. Remember, during much of their time with the Covenant, and especially after first contact at Harvest, the Brutes were looked down on by the Elites, and they were often given, for lack of a better phrase, hand-me-down technology. However, another theory I've heard, and I reluctantly have to say it makes quite a bit of sense, is that these were given to the Brutes by the Created, and I have no doubt that the Brutes would quickly side with the Created. Most of them, at least. It would also explain the energy mace the Chieftain has. Speaking of the Chieftain, besides looking badass as all hell, we can see he has what almost look like personal brute bodyguards that seem to feature unique armor of their own, and a new weapon. Can't wait to see what that's all about. Behind the Chieftain, we can see a large structure of some kind that many have come to think may be the Citadel from Halo 3, but we'll see. In the background, we can see the classic Banshee design and the classic Type 25 Spirit. Just beneath those, next to another of those brute walkers, is... Well, I really don't know. A new weapon of some kind? It kind of looks floodish, but the image is very low resolution and very small, so making any sort of definitive claim is nearly impossible. However, it does look like it's firing missiles, so maybe it is a weapons platform. Finally, let's talk human forces. We can see a number of UNSC forces charging the Brutes, all in early Covenant War armor and using era-appropriate weapons. However, what's really weird is that there are way more than just three Spartans in this image, I've counted 7, but I've heard figures as high as 13. So, what the hell is going on? Personally, I'm just hoping that this is some kind of artistic license they took for the cover art, and that canonically there are only 3 Spartans present. Otherwise, 343 and Creative Assembly are just further muddying the waters of the Spartan 2 numbers issue. At this point, we've identified almost all 75 Spartan 2 candidates, and to throw even more in there would just fuck shit up even more. I've heard theories about the remaining Spartans perhaps being those of Omega Team from Halo Wars 1, but Omega Team didn't go to the Spirit of Fire with Red Team. They remained on Arcadia, as evidenced by the fact that you can only have three Spartans in any of the post-Arcadia missions. So, yeah, I'm hoping this is just for the sake of promotional art and not meant to reflect the canon. I'd be personally fine if, in-game, you could have a shit ton of Spartan units, so long as they aren't canon and only Jerome, Douglas, and Alice appear in cutscenes. Finally, we have this UNSC vehicle in the bottom left corner. Flawless Cowboy on Reddit suggested that it may be a Kodiak, a vehicle cut from Halo Wars 1 and originally called the Fox Cannon, but was recently revealed as a Mega Block set specifically for Halo Wars 2. Although it's hard to make out any details at this point, so we can't say one way or another, I could just as easily argue that it's a Cobra tank, but time will tell. I honestly like the idea of it being a Kodiak, though. And that'll be it for now. We're just over a week away from E3, where we'll hopefully have a lot more to talk about. As is my custom, I'll be doing coverage throughout the week, so stay tuned. I'll also be pushing out my final Halo 5 breakdown video this week, so look forward to that. Until then, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you.
profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.